There are multiple Liliths in Lurianic Kabbalism. The greatest of these Liliths is the wife of Adam Kadmon, though she is still associated with Adam HaRishan as well amongst Kabbalists in general, as we brought up with the alphabet of Shirak. Another Lilith is, of course, the woman of whoredom, noted to be the female counterpart of Satan or Samael. Seen by some as the mother of all demons, which is how Hasbin Hotel conveys her, strengthening and building the forces of hell in the prologue of episode 1, she also takes on seductress tendencies, as we mentioned previously. Of those tendencies, she seduces the angel Samyaza, who is prevalent in Abrahamic traditions, as well as the Gnostic sect of Manichaeism. He is essentially the leader of the Watcher Angels. Remember, the Watcher Angels are fallen angels from the Book of Enoch, who are sent to look after or watch over humanity, but whom end up procreating with the human people there, creating the Nephilim giants that begin to threaten humanity. It is believed that when Lilith was with Adam, they were the ones who birthed the offspring that were responsible for seducing the Watcher Angels specifically. Some see them as well as descendants of Seth and Cain. Remember, Seth, Abel, and Cain are the offspring of Adam and Eve, where Seth was born after Cain slew Abel. Seth is, of course, the ancestor of Noah, and thus all of humankind. In Mandianism, Seth is one of the sons of Adam Kadmon as well. Now, Azazel is also another angel that imparted uh, on human beings forbidden knowledge that only the Watcher angels knew. So basically, he imparted onto us warfare, how to make weapons, uh, witchcraft, sorcery, um, or in, in the form of women sorcery, like dyeing their hair, dialing up their appearance uh, for the sake of deception, etc. He was eventually bound to rocks by the archangel Raphael to wait Judgment Day, and then he would be cast into flames. It was the knowledge that Azazel imparted to people that led to their own degradation over time and denigration. This could be why that hell looks so similar to the modern-day city, as it has been degenerated in this sense by forbidden knowledge, passed on down by Azazel. Being chained to a rock also makes him comparable, as he is in Enoch 1, to the Greek titan Prometheus. Both Azazel and Samyaza were also known to have conspired against Enoch himself, after he transformed into the angel Metatron. In Hasbin Hotel, Lilith is seen residing in heaven with the angels there and has been doing so for the past seven years due to a deal she made with Adam. With Adam dead, Lute, the commander of the exorcist angels, commands Lilith deal with her daughter, Charlie, or else she'll be removed from heaven. What's also interesting is that the character Alistair was also missing for seven years as well, thus establishing a link between Alistair and Lilith in the series. What's important, however, is Lilith's association with the Watcher Angels and how she essentially seduces them in mythology. As such, the angels we see in the series could be corrupt ones. Thus, the Watcher Angels became full of lust and desire, and in doing so, began working against heaven. God thus sent his archangels to punish the Watcher Angels, and that of course sent the Great Flood of Noah to wipe out all remains of their existence, ridding the world of the Watchers and the forbidden knowledge of Azazel, as well as making a covenant with Noah and thus man. As such, with Adam dead, Lilith's sense of seduction appears to be waning on the angels. As we mentioned in our video on Jewish mysticism with Gershom Sholem, the Shekinah is associated with the lowest Sephiroth sphere, as well as the state of Israel, which is supposed to represent the feminine dwelling of God. Thus, Israel is to be preserved and kept sacred so it can be united with the masculine God. The Shekinah is thus like the moon that is meant to be reunited with the sun. Through Lilith's seduction, Azazel and Samyaza were successful in corrupting the Shekinah itself. With this corruption must come a sense of restoration. Isaac Luria, whom we get the term you know, Lurianic Kabbalism from, cites Isaiah 34, 14 through 15 to emphasize on how Lilith, the great owl, was to be restored to Adam through the marriage of Leah to Jacob. Remember, in the Bible, Jacob has two wives, much like Adam does, right? Lilith and Eve. So Jacob's wives were Leah and Rachel. Thus, like Adam having Eve and Lilith as his wife, Jacob comes to take the place of Adam, while Leah takes the place of Lilith, and Rachel takes the place of Eve. Lilith and uh, Adam's daughters, they were known as the prostitutes, are thus to be restored to Adam through the wisdom of Solomon, who represents the Shekinah. This again makes sense when we consider the impact Gnosticism had on Lurianic Kabbalism, 
As we brought up before with Simon Magus, the whore is symbolic of man's defiled state, i.e. the fall, whereby he must be reunited with the divine. The divine, of course, is masculine in Jewish mystical thought, and so the fallen person is typically female, representing the Shekinah or Lois Sephiroth, the tenth one at the bottom. Thus, male and female can be reunited again. Now, the wisdom of Solomon is obtained through the Book of Solomon, which had a huge impact on the writer Herman Melville, uh, who noted, of course, the Hellenistic aspect and impact upon Jewish mysticism, uh, and of which, again, we discussed with Hans Jonas uh, and the Gnostic religion. One need only look to Moby Dick and how Captain Ahab seeks to kill the whale, who is, of course, a symbol of God. Ahab, of course, comes directly from the Bible, as noted in 1 Kings 16.33, who was noted to have angered God and thus Israel. Thus, Ahab is essentially a Gnostic story, if we consider Ahab the protagonist, of course. Now, the theme of the Book of Solomon is basically that one must be a righteous person, otherwise they will be blinded by senseless reasoning. It is senseless reasoning that prevents one from lady wisdom. Wisdom is conveyed as a, as a woman. Wisdom, of course, cannot be taught, but comes from the outside and is thus linked to transcendental thought. So it cannot be taught, it comes from the outside. Only the righteous through the outside will be granted immortality. Wisdom is thus eternal and associated with God, granted to mankind as a gift. In the show Hell of a Boss, which shares the same universe as has been Hotel, we note the Goetia family's connection to the Lesser Key of Solomon, which is based off of the Testament of Solomon, which neither Jews nor Christians view as uh, canonical. The Goetia family, of course, includes the demons Andralphus, Paimon, and Stolas. Paimon, of course, being the king of all demons. The book explains how Solomon was able to command demons with his magical ring, which is given to him by the archangel Michael and is in the shape of a pentagram, so as to construct his temple. Hence, the lesser key of Solomon and the Ars Goetia explain how to summon and control these demons through seals. We should note that both the pentagram, the five-pointed star, and the hexagram, the six-pointed star, can both convey Solomon's seal, reflective of the tetragrammaton, or God's name. Because of this, some do see it in relation, or as a derivation, of the Star of David itself. The pentagram, of course, is used extensively in Hasbun Hotel, associated usually with the goat of Mendes or Baphomet via Lifus Levi, and thus Hermeticism, signifying as above, so below, or macrocosm and microcosm. Solvet coagula, or solution and coagulation, is linked, of course, to the alchemic process of coinciding opposites to create a new substance, or creating the third term from the initial two, like creating a new chemical compound from separate uh, conjoined elements. Now, Solomon takes Beelzebub under his command, as well as Epiphus, uh, an Arabic wind demon, as well as uh, Abzath Abo, so the one-winged fallen angel who is the enemy, essentially, of Moses, and whom controls all of the prisoners in Tartarus. And along with the lesser key of Solomon is the greater key of Solomon as well, which concerns itself with magical operations under the power of God. Again, it deals with summoning and constraining demons in order to do one's bidding. The book is referenced by both Lovecraft, of course, in supernatural horror and literature, as well as Goethe himself in Faust. For our purposes, the wisdom of Solomon may be uh, the linking point between the Goetia family and Hell of a Boss and the characters of Has Been Hotel, as there is a specific demonological hierarchy shared by both in the series, where they are essentially occupying uh, the same universe. In short, Lilith seduces the angels Semyaza and Azazel, leading to the fallen angels creating the Nephilim, as we are corrupting the Shekinah in mankind itself. Alistair and Lilith seem to be linked by their shared seven-year absinthe. Lilith and her daughters, or in this case Charlie, will be united through the Shekinah. Now, the Shekinah may be represented by Hell, since Hell resembles a corrupted Earth in many ways. Also, we must remember the cities of Hell are shaped like a pentagram, linked to the hierarchies of Hell, etched both in the sky above and the Earth below, thus linking as above, so below in the Hermetic sense. This uniting or reuniting will be done through the wisdom of Solomon or Solomon's seal, which mirrors again the pentagram or hexagram. In Hell of a Boss, the closest link to this wisdom or Solomon's seal is of course the Ars Goetia, or the lesser key of Solomon possessed by the Goetia family, which could result in a crossover of the characters in Hell of a Boss and Has Been Hotel.
Lilith will need to be linked to Charlie through Goetian magic, and I am assuming Alistair will have a very large part to play in that process, especially considering his link to Lilith, and as well as Crowley, and of course Crowley's link to the Goetia itself. That's assuming, of course, it follows the mystical thought behind occult thinking. Still, whether the show adheres to these tenets or not, they are still interesting ideas to consider on their own, I suppose.